From wherever you are around the world, welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we are exploring the world of confidence. That's right, with us today is Kim Summers Egglesey. She wrote a wonderful book called Getting Your Life to a 10 Plus. Tips and tools for finding your purpose, being in your power, and living an amazing life. Ms. Egglesey is an award-winning inspirational speaker, author, TV host, life coach, hypnotherapist, and NLP practitioner. She specializes in helping people get their lives to the extraordinary 10-plus level while embracing their truest selves. So let's welcome Ms. Egglesey to the circle. Welcome. Thank you. I am very honored to be here. Thank you very much. This is a great book. Right here, getting a life to a 10 plus. You saw it a minute ago, but I want to show it to you anyway. Um, can you give me a little idea of how you got started on this? Yeah, I, I actually got introduced to seeing the famous Jim Rohn. Many people don't know oh, Jim yeah. Rohn's who, who trained Anthony Robbins. Um, he's a big guru in personal development. Sadly, passed away a few years ago. But he was really like the father of personal development in many ways. And so I started following him at a young age and really learned goal setting, really got addicted to that personal growth, self-help. And that kind of became my goal to become my best self. And then fast forward through the years, I worked in the field of special education on a lot of behavior modification, even schizophrenic people. I did a lot in the entertainment industry, so I did hosting and acting and producing and modeling. And then at the same time as all of that, I was actually life coaching on the side as a hobby. Oh, and, yeah. and then fast forward some more, stepped into the career, passion and purpose of coaching, speaking, writing books, things like that, and then got introduced to the person who was Jim Rohn's 18-year partner, Kyle Wilson, and I'm now partnered up with him, and he's worked with Chris Widener, Zig Ziglar, Agmandino, Jack Canfield, people like that, so it's been a real dream come true working with him on many projects. That's fabulous. It's a great group to hang out with, I'll yeah, tell you it is. that. <laughs> it definitely makes you better. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what your book is about, and I know it talks about positive communication, if I remember correctly. Yes. It talks about confidence. Definitely. So the first thing I want to do is define what is positive communication. You know, it, it's actually been studied by scientists and quantum physicists that if you use negative words and if you use negative thinking and language, you'll live a less fulfilling life, you'll get sick more, you may not live as many years, your life will be more negative. It's pretty simple. And so if you actually do something as simple as shifting your thinking and your language to be more positive, your life will shift in tremendous ways. And so I use different examples in my book, such as instead of ever saying the word that you're overwhelmed, you would say I'm in demand and you see how my physiology changes with that like or that. instead of saying I am so frustrated and irritated you're going to say I'm fascinated and I'm intrigued and what that does is it immediately might even make you laugh a little but it'll <laughs> shift your mindset to go well wait a minute what am I taking so seriously I'm punishing myself by thinking this way and so I'm gonna start shifting my language instead of anxious I'm gonna say I'm anticipating amazing things because excitement and anticipation is very similar to this, the feeling of anxiety yeah. and so just shifting your language in many ways and kind of training your brain to think that way and to speak that way and to talk to yourself that way is going to shift your whole life you actually made a good point. That's actually wonderful stuff there. Uh, good point there. Internal dialogue. I know some coaches will talk about that. What yeah. do we say to each other? Or say to ourselves and to each other. Um, stuff like, uh, well, why did I do that? I, I can never do this right. Is that something you work with on people? Definitely. And, and I'm such a big one on training your mind. I had suffered with OCD with thoughts. And so... <laughs> I would traumatize myself because my mind would just never stop and I would be thinking all of these negative things and I wouldn't know how to turn it off and that's basically what that is. And so I train my own mind by every time a negative thought would come up, I would imagine throwing it out in the ocean and after three weeks, I would have less and less thoughts. It got down to about maybe 10 a day and now I'm to the point where if a thought that doesn't feel like it's truly mine comes in my head that I don't want, I learn to just ignore it. It doesn't even affect me anymore. It's way in the background, if there at all. And so I truly know for a fact that you can train your mind to stop those thoughts that are disruptive, that don't feel like they're yours, from coming in, because we don't need them. Now, uh, that takes time. Yeah, I mean, it really, if, you, if you're focused, it could take three weeks. That's not that bad. Yeah, it's like a habit. It's <laughs> it kind of like, like food. Habit. You know, you, you eliminate those the junk food and it's really horrible at first and for a couple of weeks you're just like oh this is torture and pretty soon you're I don't crave it anymore it's very similar yeah I always wondered why cake and pies weren't good for you <laughs> I know flip that too around bad, right? yeah, and yeah. wine <laughs> make the vegetables bad for you and the cake good for you yeah um, confidence is something you were talking about before as well in the book and in your program why do people have low confidence 
It, it could be from many things. It's definitely an epidemic. I, I speak to lots of groups and really only about 5% of people could make a list of things that they love about themselves. I find that maybe 5% five. Five of audiences, wow. of even millionaires, of moms, of you know groups that are entrepreneurs, I'll ask them, how many of you can make a list of 10 things you love about yourself in one minute? And about 5% raise their hand. And so I think we're programmed, maybe old school thinking, we're not taught in school that it's okay to own who you are, embrace your uniqueness, and love yourself. And people think that's snobby or that's being fully yourself or conceited, and that becomes this ingrained belief. And so I think a lot of times it's taboo or almost weird to to be, I'm good at this, and mm -hmm. I am magnetic, and I'm an amazing person, and I'm going to rock this project. People go, oh, whoa, you know, they think that that's strange. But if you're doing it in an authentic, down-to-earth way, people feel they have permission to do the same, and you're living by example. And so a lot of it is ingrained beliefs we've learned from parents, grandparents, culture, school, things we've seen in society comparing ourselves to others. And they get imprinted and ingrained, and pretty soon that's our pattern, and that's how we're seeing and living and expressing ourselves in the world. But deep inside, we know that we have possibility to be confident and to be different. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically shifting, letting go, and unlearning all of that, and re-sculpting and shaping your life to be your most confident self and own who you are. That's interesting. Uh, that, now, I can't remember in your book or not, but I'm sure you've heard of it from all the other guys. There's the Pygmalion effect, where they teach the kids. You know, it, They had two groups of kids. And they had one group where they told the kids, you were great, you can mm -hmm. do this. And they call that the Pygmalion effect because that group of kids actually was more successful. They okay. did better in school compared to the other group that didn't have anything. It was just kind of left there. They were just, you know, mm -hmm. told, just do this assignment, blah, 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 blah. Like the other group was told, you're great. You can do this assignment. You can do much more than this. But the group, really, there wasn't any difference between the kids. It was just telling them what they could. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the same thing. Yeah, and it, it has to be telling them, and you know, feedback's amazing if it's from the people yeah. you know, like, and trust. I'm a big advocate of feedback, but also the belief. Those kids had to have that belief that they could, even if they were told, but they didn't have the belief, and maybe at home they were getting the wrong information, mm -hmm. they probably, probably that little group didn't do as well. But the ones that were told and also had that belief in themselves were the ones, and but that can be shifted too. Most of everything that we've been taught or, or programmed can be unlearned and shifted, as long as it's not a genetic trait that we, you know, we can't get rid of or something like fear, you know. Yeah, that's a tough that, one to get rid of. You know, you can, but it's difficult. One last question before I take a commercial break here. Um, and then we're going to get to how to build your confidence. We're going to find out what she does. We're going to put her on the hot seat. But before we get <laughs> to that, uh, what's one of the most common things you've seen working as a life coach? What do you see out there as one of the bigger problems? Besides, is it because of confidence or is it something else that you see a lot? Um, I, I would say... Fear, like I said, and it, wow. and it is possible to let go of fear, but fear and confidence kind of mixed together gets in the way of people doing what they really want to do. They're so scared of the outcome not working or fear of being judged or fear of not being good enough. Those three, I think that that prevents them and it keeps them at a standstill. So that's what I often see. And it definitely, it's hard to shift it, but it can for sure be shifted. Yeah, that is a big problem. We're going to keep up with more stuff here with Miss Egglesey right after these commercials. Welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4455. A lot of time we don't even know what's wrong with us and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you. And we're back. Thank you for joining us again. We're going to continue on, but this time we're going to find out. We found out that people have low confidence. People's belief systems can hurt them. Uh, positive communication is important over negative communication. Now we're going to find out what Kim does. So let's find out. So let's say I'm a, a client. Of okay. I come in to see you and I have uh, fear that my TV show isn't going to work well in the future. What would you want to do with me? Okay, that's a good one because that's a very common one. People going into new projects or new businesses sometimes won't bother to move forward because they just feel like right away that they're going to fail. And so definitely getting into a place where you can write 
at least five reasons you deserve it. What are you bringing to the table? What are five reasons you can program into your mind that you deserve this more than anyone else, like, or at least as much as anyone else? And then what are five ways you're going to think outside the box and behave differently than you ever have to make sure this is a success? Those would be two big ones because that'll shift any doubts okay. or blocks in your brain. And then you can get to the place where you're like, okay, what blocks or beliefs or uncertainties are still there and list them. And then I have the client actually coach themselves and say, okay, if you were coaching a friend that has these blocks, disbeliefs, or uncertainties, what would you tell them? And if they still, usually they have the solution because they're pretending it's someone else. And I go, well, you just solved your own problem. But if they still (laughs) have the blocks or, or, you know, beliefs that are holding them down, then I help them break through. And a lot of times I'll do an NLP exercise, which helps shift their mind quickly with them or hypnotherapy or something like that. I feel like I should have paid her for that session. <laughs> um, here are a couple of questions. We're going to d- deep, dig a little deeper into this. Uh, gender. Does gender matter? When your clientele, have you noticed different patterns or are female less confident than men or blah, blah, blah? Oh, with me in general, working with them? No, no. Well, actually, that's a good point, too. We'll get to that one in a second. But Could no. go really deep on that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that one a little bit. But um, do, do you see women in general having less confidence or more confidence issues than men? I, I would say I, I find it's it's, stereotypes. I'm I really find right. that sometimes I probably would say women seem to have a little bit less confidence than men in general and that mm-hmm. men actually sometimes have too much confidence oh, where wow. it's delusional a little bit like they'll have such a big ego that it's actually getting in the way like a different kind of confidence where they're thinking that they're better than oh, they yeah. are. Type All of that thing. is what the phrase Grandiose is. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but in general, it's pretty equal. It's just sometimes I'll see that. And then for women, I think the biggest epidemic that I see personally is women that have devoted their lives to their kids, which is fine, but didn't have anything of their own going on. And then all of a sudden their kids leave the nest and they go, whoa, I didn't do anything for myself. I didn't follow any kind of passion or purpose. What do I do now? I feel like I'm lost. I don't know who I am anymore. And I see that a lot. And that's confidence building and that's helping them step into their passion and purpose and be okay with that. That's interesting. Very fascinating. Now let's go back to the other question you brought up. I didn't even think about um, how does it affect <laughs> people working with a woman? Does it mean working with a male client? Does that affect you? Do you see a difference there between working with a male client and a female client? Um, in general, of their behavior or yeah, you know, how do they respond to you? Do they do they take you? I mean, obviously they hired you, so I'm not sure how much it would affect them. But do you see anything there? I mean, they... You know, I I find that women are more emotional and cry more, but I I feel like it's pretty equal. I think because I'm comfort confident and comfortable, I don't feel intimidated. I feel like I'm bringing something to the table, and I usually attract people that match with me really well. And so I. I don't, I don't see much difference. I just see women being more emotional and being okay with wearing their heart on their sleeve more. And I feel like men are a little more guarded. Yeah, and that's actually an interesting point, too, you just brought up. Um, how important is it to be able to connect with your client? Oh, definitely. My, my whole first hour and a half, I just give them, usually I give a free hour when they sign up with me just for building rapport, to make sure we're meshing well, to go over what their needs are, to have them ask me any questions. And... I'm how I am right now all the time, and so usually they feel at ease because I have a really down-to-earth personality, so usually it works well. Good, good. Excellent. And does it, it doesn't only apply to individuals like business or CEOs. It can apply to anyone, or is this more specifically tailored to your program? You know what? I, I, have different, I do business coaching as well. So I do business coaching, relationship coaching, and life coaching. And so I do work anywhere from with moms, like I was talking about, mm-hmm. to entrepreneurs building a brand new business and just had a mastermind with Kyle Wilson with a bunch of millionaires in the room. I mean, just all different groups. So All different groups. Yeah. Excellent. Now, here's a question for you. Um, Society is changing. It always does. Every 20 or 30 years, we have a generational shift. Um, do you work at all with like 19, 20, 21 year olds? This is a very vulnerable period of our time, right? We, we really lack confidence. We don't know who we are. Mm-hmm. Is that a good age group to work with? I know financially, you may not be able to afford you all the time, but I don't know. Yeah, we, we've had some of those age groups sign up for the confidence course, and that's been, I have a confidence course, and that's been amazing because they can do it at their own pace. But I find, at least in my experience, the parents of those age groups are the ones that kind of push them, and usually they don't come seeking until they're more like 24 and up. That's what I've seen. Oh, that's interesting. Um, when they're actually seeking a coach or a group. Um, so I tend to work more with 26 and up, it seems like. Um, but I'm open to it, and I've spoken at middle schools and high schools, which I love doing that. And um, and once in a while, we'll coach someone in that age range. Actually, give us a little bit more information about your confidence course. What's that all about? Yeah, I um, it's 10 weeks to confidence, and it was live, and now it's a recorded membership site where they can listen to 10 modules of one-hour recordings on 
it's really more than confidence. It's confidence, getting rid of fear, removing limiting beliefs, making space in your life for greatness, all kinds of things. There's 50 pages of worksheets and there's wow. celebrity expert interviews and then there's group coaching calls all year long. So it's amazing and, and they get that for the whole entire year. And I've just heard the most amazing testimonies from it because people have shifted their lives and kind of stepped into who they really are. And it's almost like they got permission and then they received the tools and then they were able to step into it. Excellent. Well, I hope you love Kim. Eagle, see as much as I do. Here's the book again, Getting Your Life to a 10 Plus. Kim, I know people are going to want to know where to get a hold of you. Where do we go? Well, for the confidence course, the, the website is simple. It's just kimsconfidencecourse.com. That's easy enough. Easy. And, and right now it's actually a really amazing special. So if you want to check it out. And then <laughs> um, my website is kimlifecoach.com. That's a Kim with an I. K I M. K I M. Thank you so much again. It was Kim, for wonderful. Being here. I had so much fun. Thank it you. Was great having you. Thank you for joining us. Remember, our motto is simple. Wherever there's psychology involved, whether you have confidence or not, we're there. See you next time, everyone.